statistical process control for six sigma processes. In the control department of a six sigma process, uh, what is the chance of the control department to find a flaw? In the control department, when they are checking everything, in a six sigma process, do you what is, uh, no, that is for the customer. Six point eight out of a million. Yes. So out of a million. So if they, if the control department of a six sigma follows what we just discussed, like a sample of one hundred or a sample of three in case of X bar, they would definitely, you know, most probably for years, they will not find any problem. So how can we do the statistical process control for a six sigma process? Because, you know, calculating the, um, the number of faults in the sample is not reasonable. Even if you take a sample of, a million, there are six flaws in it. So uh, the answer is uh, what is called a process capability measure. And process capability, instead of looking at the count of out of control uh, phenomena, it relies on the shift in the standard deviation. So before we work on the formula for process capability, let's think about uh, these situations, A, B, C, D. And I want you to tell me if you are, or how do you feel? If you have the feeling, then you will understand the formula, okay? If this is the design specification of a Six Sigma process, I'm talking about A. And this is the specification, and this is lower specification limit, and this is upper specification limit. Can you tell me what is the distance between upper specification limit and the center line when we are designing the process? You can watch, pardon? 4.5 deviations. No, not in the, not the control. Uh, I'm just talking of specifications now. Right. What, you know, start, the question is about the specification, not control limits. How much is the distance between upper specification level and the center line? Six st standard deviations. Six standard deviations. And here it would be six standard deviations. So the distance between upper specification limit and lower specification limit of a six sigma process is 12 standard deviations, right? Now, the production observed variation is this much. What do you feel? Do, do you feel good in this company? If you're working in this company, this is the specification limits of design, and this is the variation that you are observing. Tell me, how do you feel? Really bad. <laughs> yes. So we feel bad in this case, because if we divide the distance between the upper specification limit and this will see that the variations are more than what is expected. Now, if the design specification is like this and your observation is like this, how do you feel? Just okay. Very good. Neutral? Very good. Yeah, no, you're happy. Like you have a, you can still continue your work nothing bad has happened. If this happens, it's the, you know, form C, this is your specifications, and this is the range of variations you observe. You should get a, a raise. Good. That you here, you feel really happy. 
right? Now, if this happens, the design specification has this, this just imagine that this is the target and this is upper specification, lower specification limit. The range of variation actually didn't change, but the center line has shifted. How do you feel? Very bad. Very bad. So both of these cases, we feel very bad because all of these products are actually, when they go to the hand of the customer, they are really bad. So what is the meaning here? The meaning is that in this case, in the case A, I just write it down, the meaning for you. So when you read the book, you have a, you know, a general understanding. In this case, we have too much variation. So if I look at the standard deviation of what I'm observing and compare with the standard deviation of the people who designed the process, I see that the standard deviation that I'm observing is more than that. And notice that to calculate the standard deviation, I don't need a million sample. Even if I have 1000 items in my sample, I can find the standard deviation and compare with the standard deviation of the designers of the system. In this case, we don't see that the variation is changed. Actually, the variation, you know, the amount of the the amount of variation from upper 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 bound of observation to the lower bound of observation is similar to the variation that was expected. But we see a shift in the center line. But this shift in the center line causes that some of the variations go out of the specification limit. Now, interestingly, there is a simple formula that detects all of um, these. And this is called process capability. It says, find the upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit. So um, let's say, what would be the process capability in this case? The mean is as designed, the standard deviation as designed, that One. fraction which uh, says upper specification level minus the lower specification limit divided by six sigma, what it will be? Two. Upper specification limit to here is six sigma. From here to here is also six sigma the upper specification limit from upper specification limit to lower specification limit, the total is 12 sigma. When we divide it, and notice that in this case, sigma is the same. So what we are observing is exactly what they have designed. Six sigma, what is the process capability? Two. Very good. So when process capability is two, we have a system that is exactly at six sigma. And the, the trick is this, the important thing is this, we don't have to test 1 million products and in the control department, like this is a statistical analysis. So you just take a sample of 1000, you find the standard deviation that you have, you divide 12 times the standard deviation of the design by six times of the standard deviation of what you are observing. And if it is two, you are exactly as it is expected. In this case, look at this. This is upper specification limit of the design. This is lower specification limit of the design. The process capability would be 12 sigma, upper specification minus lower specification. Now the standard deviation of our observation, is this more than the specification or less than? Is it less than design or more than design? The less variation than. of observation is? Less than. Less than design. Therefore, the standard deviation, if you calculate six times the standard deviation, would be smaller than expected. And this would be bigger than two, because the denominator is smaller. So if process capability is two, we are fine. If it is more than two, 
not fine. In this case, process capability would be 12 sigma. It's always 12 sigma in the numerator. Is the standard deviation of the observation more than design or less than design? More. More than. Therefore, when we divide it six times the standard deviation of this, the result would be less than two. And when it is less than two, we are unhappy. So basically, process capability will tell us uh, if it is two or more than two, we are happy. If it is less than two, we are unhappy. And we don't need to take a sample of a million or a billion observations to make a decision. The only problem with this process capability that I just explained is here. Let's work on this one. Let's calculate process capability here. The distance between upper specification limit and lower specification limit, the numerator is always 12 sigma. Now, what is the upper specification, um, you know, the upper bound of observation and lower bound of observation? Is, uh, is the variation more or less than design? This variation is more than design or less than design? Like, like both? <laughs> no, it's exactly the same as the, like design. It's the, same. the amount of variation. So it's but, exactly like as far six as sigma, it is yeah. two. So unfortunately, process capability doesn't work in this case. What is the solution? The solution is that don't use it. Instead, there are two other formulas that are other versions of process capability that they always work and uh, for all of the four cases. Um, but the formula is a tiny bit different. It's based on the upper specification limit to the midpoint and the denominator is three sigma. So maybe the note that I want you to take is that um, always use the pro process capability formulas 10, 11, and 12, okay? Now let's see why that is better. Okay, notice that we were unhappy in the case of process D but process capability original formula, like the simple process capability formula, gives us two, which is wrong. We are really in a situation that many of our products are out of, um, you know, the specification that the customers expect, but um, the process capability was incapable of detecting the problem. Now the new formulas of uh, process capability uh, they say that don't rely of, on the total range. Uh, these new formulas include the center line. Therefore, they can detect the shift on the center line. So let's apply them to this one because this was the one that we needed them. And then I will show you that for all of the others, also they work. So we have to always use them. The mean of the observed, not the mean of the designed. So process capability, we, we look at the mean of the design. So upper specification limit to the center line, this is, uh, how much is this? This is very small. And when we divide it by three sigma, we will get a number that is less than two. Now, when we find the process capability lower side, this from the, from the mean that we are observing to the specification, how much is this? It is a large amount. And if we divide it by three sigma, it would be more than two. And then 
once we find both of them, we will look at the minimum of the two. So here, the minimum of the two, minimum of this number and this number would be less than two. Therefore, process is not six sigma. Okay, so let's work on an example, okay? Let's say that in the example that was in my video, what was the lower specification limit? 97. 97, upper specification limit was 103, the target was 100, and now we want to find the process capability. And capability, upper side we have to calculate, we, uh, lower side we have to calculate, and then, uh, then find the minimum. Let's say that what we are really observing is uh, this mean that is 100, but the standard deviation is not that sigma anymore. So the standard deviation was supposed to be 0.5. In fact, it is 0.7. Okay, and therefore, my upper specification limit is 103 minus the center line is 100 divided by three times. Notice that my variations are too much now. So I have to multiply it by 0.7. Please tell me what is the upper side of my process capability. 103 minus 100 divided by 0.7. Notice that the design was 0.5, but unfortunately here we have 0 0.7. 1.42, okay? Now let's calculate the process capability lower side. That would be the center line, which is 100 minus, uh, oh, um, 97 is the lower specification limit. And then we have to divide it by three times uh, 0.7. Of course, this is again three, and it would be 1.4286. And if you use the new formula, the minimum of 1.4 and 1.4 is 1.4. Is this process six sigma? The process capability calculated as the minimum of the upper side and lower side is 1.4. How do you feel? Not good. Very good. Now let's do the same thing with the numbers. On this case, notice that the original simple formula wouldn't be able to detect this. Now the design is 103, 97, 100. The observation is 101, 104, and 98. You see that there is no shift in variations actually but uh, we are observing a shift in the center line. Now let's calculate the process capability upper side. It would be upper specification limit, 103, minus the mean that we are observing is 101. Notice that in this case, the mean of observation and mean of the target was the same, therefore we used 100. Now here, the mean of the uh, the upper specification limit minus the mean of observation divided by three. And what is the standard deviation of that, that we are observing? 0. 0.5. Uh, 0. 0.5, exactly, because it was 0. 0.5 for the original process, and here we don't see any shift, so it is still 0. 0.5. Now tell me two divided by three multiplied by 0. 0.5. 1.33. 1.33, very good. Now the process capability lower side. 2.66 continuous. Exactly. 
And basically the process capability is the minimum of 1.33 and 2.66. It is 1.33. So process capability is 1.33. How do you feel? Not good. Not good. That's the difference. We go through all of this pain because the original idea of process capability uh, sometimes cannot detect a system that is uh, not good. But this two-sided system capability formula always works. Um, and uh, if you go here, it would be two. And if you go here, uh, it would be even more than two. So this is the problem. Okay. So uh, let me uh, do one of the examples. I draw a line, as you say. And on the left-hand side, you want to put down the lower S the LSL of 0 0.05. And then the upper boundary would be 0 0.1 centimeters. And um, I guess the, the center of that would be the the mean and then you had a sample of 100 so this is the target that's the target yes okay and then you had a, a sample of 100 parts that had a mean of 0 0.067 so these are from sample, sample. mean is uh, 0 0.067 with a standard deviation of 0 0.21. Oh, standard deviation of the sample. Yeah. Okay. So then draw another line below your target or the first one for your, this would be your sample representation of your sample. So what, is, what, is the, what is the mean of the 0 0.05 and 0.1? It would Can have to be the that? distance between the two. Divide by, uh, no, we have to add these and divide by two. So this would be one. And this observation, as your friends suggested, is uh, so 0 0.67 and standard division 0 0.2.1. Now the process capability, the upper side. <laughs> is upper specification limit minus the mean that we are observing divided by the standard deviation <clears throat> that we are observing, which is 0 0.021 uh, multiplied by 3 and process capability lower side is the mean that we are observing minus the lower specification limit divided by three times our standard deviation. The upper uh, CP is 0 0.5238. And the lower side? 0 0.2698. And therefore, the minimum of 0 0.52 and 0 0.26 is 0 0.26. How do we feel? Very bad. So bad. It should be more than two. It is bad on both sides. So it is terrible. Notice, what, is, what is important here? Notice that the only thing that we needed is that let's say we took a sample of 1,000 and we found the standard deviation of these variations. And that is enough for process capability comparing it with this upper specification limit and lower specification limit to tell us whether the process is in control or not. We just compare with two, which is the design expected design and then we are fine.